Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on forestry, which is one of Ethiopia's resource bases. Students, in our previous lesson, we discussed land, livestock, and fishery. We learned that land is a very important resource base for Ethiopia. It contributes significantly as a resource base to different economic activities, such as agriculture, industry, and construction. We also learned that Ethiopia has the largest livestock population in Africa, and the livestock subsector accounts for 10% of the GDP. However, fishery in Ethiopia is underdeveloped. The share of fishery is only 1% of the GDP. Our today's lesson focuses on economic significance of forestry and forest conservation efforts made by the government. First, we will illustrate economic significances of the forest resource, and later we will discuss the forest conservation efforts. The forest coverage of Ethiopia was estimated to be about 30% in the late 19th century. Currently, the forested area of the country is around 3%, including all 58 national forest priority areas. The whole 58 national forest priority areas are estimated to cover 3 0.5 million hectares of natural forest. Students, forest resource is one of the renewable natural resources. Hence, the forest use can be sustained unless overexploited. Forestry resources have several economic and other functions. The major economic significance of forestry resource and forest products are as follows. They are sources of livelihood to local people, source of energy, income, and employment. They are important input for construction, industry, and micro and small scale enterprises. And they protect flood and control carbon. Now, Let's see each of these economic functions of forest one by one. We will begin with livelihood functions of the forest resources. A livelihood function of the forest resource consists of energy, food, raw materials, income, and employment opportunities generated from the forest to the local people. Forests contribute to the local livelihoods through the following ways. They are source of energy, such as firewood and charcoal. Timber and non-timber forest products generate income. Forest products, such as spices, handicrafts from forest products, tourist guidance, and guarding parks and protected areas generates employment opportunities. They provide animal fodder and trees to construct houses and so on. Students, so we have varieties of livelihood functions of the forest. Now, watch the following video carefully. It will show you some of the livelihood functions of the forest to the local people. Households collect fuel wood from forests. They make charcoal from forest. They collect other non-timber forest products such as coffee, honey, and spices. Ethiopian farmers also collect forest coffee and spices and make traditional medicines from leaves and roots of trees. People make different handicrafts using forest products 
such as bamboo, tree leaves, and trunks of trees. Now, let's discuss the second economic function of forestry. Forest products are used as inputs in large construction and manufacturing industries. Forest products are commonly used as inputs for micro and small scale enterprises. Currently, bamboo tree is one of the forest products used for production of different commodities in manufacturing industries in Ethiopia. Timber is used as inputs for production of different home and office equipment by micro and small scale enterprises. A spacious of acacia is used as a source for gum arabic. Gum arabic is used in the manufacturing of adhesive and pharmaceutical products. Students, do you remember the third economic function of forestry? Watch the following video clip that explains the third economic significance of forestry. Flood protection functions of forest are crucial to maintain environmental quality. When the forest coverage is cleared, the land is more exposed and the frequency of erosion becomes high. When a farmland is surrounded by a forest, it is protected from erosion. When the forest is removed, the land is degraded and results in low productivity. The natural coffee forest in southwest Ethiopia is one of the national forest priority areas. It has different economic functions to local people as well as to the country. The forest land is divided into two zones, core zone and buffer zone. The core zone is untouchable to maintain the genetic resource of coffee arabica. This is known as in situ conservation of genetic information. In buffer zone, unlike core zone, local communities are allowed to grow organic coffee and collect spices and other non-timber forest products. Students, let's now wind up the economic significance of the forestry resources. The following are some of the functions of natural forest coffee in southwest Ethiopia. Organic forest coffee, beekeeping, collection of spices and traditional medicine, different trees to make handicrafts, timber production functions of the forest. Answer the question after discussing with the students sitting next to you.
Students, I hope you've answered the question correctly. The economic significance of the natural coffee forest to the local community are collection of organic coffee, spices, and other non-timber forest products, beekeeping within the forest, timber extraction, and firewood collection and charcoal production and others. The current economic function of the forest will not be maintained indefinitely. This is because the rate of deforestation is high in Ethiopia due to population growth, state farm programs, resettlement and increased demand to agricultural and grazing land. Students, do we have strategies to maintain the use of forest resource indefinitely? Before answering this question, we need to discuss forest conservation efforts of the government. The conservation efforts of the government are essential to maintain forest use. Effective forest conservation needs meeting two interests simultaneously. Meeting livelihood needs, that is, income and other interests of the local people from the forest. Avoiding over exploitation of the forest. Forest conservation efforts of the imperial and military government had many limitations. During the feudal regime, privatization of the forest undermined customary use rights of the local people. During military socialist regime, the forest resources are nationalized. This measure encouraged illegal logging and accelerated the destruction of Ethiopia's remaining forests. The current government introduced participatory forest management approach to address conservation and livelihood needs simultaneously. The recent reforestation programs have resulted in planting of millions of seedlings in community forests throughout the country. Students, what is participatory forest management?
Students, I hope you've answered the question correctly. Participatory Forest Management PFM approach refers to the absolute involvement of local people in natural resource management. It requires local people's active participation in planning, implementation, monitoring, evaluation, development and benefit sharing from forest products. Assistance is provided by government agencies and NGOs that plays the role of facilitators. Students, before we wind up today's session, let me summarize the most important points. Today, we have learned economic significance of the forest, livelihood functions of the forestry such as source of energy, income and employment, input for production in manufacturing industries. Students, with this we come to the end of today's lesson. Next time we will come with a new topic on energy and minerals. Until then, it is goodbye from me.